Check out shares of Lionsgate soaring 7% today as the reopening trade takes hold. The stock is up more than 20% since earnings last week. Joining us now is the vice chairman of Lionsgate Entertainment, Michael Burns. Michael, great to see you. Well, uh, I wish I could see you. It's the first time I've spoken to you, I think, since you uh, are a mom. So congratulations. Oh, thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. Um, what a day today uh, with the extraordinary news from Pfizer. And I'm wondering, Michael, if that changes your view of, of how you see the, the massive changes that are already underway in the movie production and distribution business that had been accelerated by COVID. Does this give you new hope that perhaps some of that will, will slow down a bit? I think that COVID has obviously hurt the theater business uh, dramatically, but uh, I do believe it will be coming back and it will be coming back when COVID is behind us. And I think certainly the vaccine helps. But the nice thing about what Joe Drake and his team are doing on the theatrical side is they're making an awful lot of content and we're able to monetize that in ways we never have been in the past. And, and that's working for us. When you say you think the movie business will be back when the pandemic is behind us, will it be back in the same way? Will it be back in the same force? You recently did uh, layoffs in the, in the film business, in your film group, 15 percent. Um, could you see that group sort of uh, grow back to its original size once we're we're, we're post-pandemic? I think to be you know, perfectly frank, I think when you make cuts and you, you streamline a particular division like we have on the motion picture business, I, I don't see bodies being added back. I think that we have a very efficient operation and I think it'll stay at that level. Michael, it's Tim. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hey, you know, you have such great content that sets you apart from a lot of your peers, but you also have flexibility uh, on your distribution. And I know in mid-September you released Antebellum uh, in the PVOD space. Talk about that. Talk about how that went and talk about the, you know, the ability to actually control the distribution. Yeah, I think our plan is working, Tim. What's happening is we have this giant content engine. And when you couple that with a premium global streaming platform, it's a pretty good uh, combination. It's a good one-two punch. And then adding to that, the library, I think it's sort of, uh, it's been overlooked for a long time, but if you, I think it's hard to overlook the fact that, you know, the last 12 months you're talking about, uh, look at this $738 million of record, uh, record uh, library uh, revenue. It's creating enormous value. We could make a case pretty, pretty uh, uh, straightforward in a very straightforward fashion that our, our library is now approaching the enterprise value of the company. Michael, it's Karen. Thanks. Thanks for being on. Back to the model, the tr question about the traditional model. Do you think it will change in terms of when uh, theaters will, when movies will open, how long theaters will have them, or is that going to change significantly? I think a lot of windows are going to be uh, moved around. I think that we all believe that those that make uh, content for the theatrical experience, we all uh, believe that that is a valuable window, and we'd like to see that open back up and be a robust business. Now, when it's going to happen, I don't really know. Somebody, a friend of mine who runs another studio, he sent me this the other day. He said, when somebody asks you that question, just uh, shake this. So uh, it is, uh, it's hard didn't know exactly uh, when the, the theaters are going to open, but they will open. And we're encouraged by what we're seeing in some of the international marketplaces. All right, Michael, we're going to have to leave it there. It's always a pleasure to see you. I can see you. I know you can't see us. <laughs> Melissa, you didn't ask you didn't ask me one question about stars, which is our 70 70 percent of our uh, uh, contribution margin. But we are uh, excited about the way that all these businesses are working together. Yeah, Guy was going to ask you about stars. And, oh, you know, I'll ask you one last question. How much of a pull forward do you think there has been because of the pandemic in terms of subscribers? I think it's helped. But if you sort of look across the if you look at all the numbers, you talk about you know, we're 10x uh, the number of OTT subscribers at Stars that we were when we bought Stars four years ago. Ten times. You're talking about global, you know, global OTT subs that up 20 percent, uh, domestic subs for the quarter up 24 percent. Those are big numbers. I think that you had a, a the trend was going our way even before the pandemic with uh, the job that Jeff Hirsch and the team at Stars are doing, and it's just been uh, accelerated or supercharged by what's happening in the world. All right. I got producers that are going to yell at me, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, giving me that question. Michael Burns, uh, vice chair of Lionsgate. Guy, I'll go to you on this. We've, we've known Michael for a very long time. Yeah, Hugh, listen, Michael Burns was coming on this show when, you know, we used to have to ask people to come on. He would always come on whenever asked. I'm a, I'm a huge Michael Burns fan. 
he knows that, so I'm clearly biased. But I was going to ask about stars because that was a tremendous act. You think about what they did there. You think about how much it's grown. I don't think the market is pricing in the stars' success. I'm a huge fan of power, the series, and now this new power, um, it, which is tremendous. Powerful. I mean, you talk about a dark show. It's the best, right? Exactly. So you want to watch something cool, watch that. Stock's not being, I don't think it's given enough credit for the stars, and I think the stock should go higher from here. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.